it doesn't matter how good your whiskey is. If you can't sell it, then you're not gonna get to make it for very long. We think we make really great whiskey, but we also put a lot of effort into trying to get it out there, tell the story, and so this is the story. Welcome to uh, Westward Whiskey Distillery. I'm Christian Krogstad, founder and uh, master distiller. Love to show you around what we're doing here. We've been in this space for about four years now. Uh, this is our third location in Oregon. These are uh, some of our barrels, just uh, recently filled today actually and, and heading out to our uh, Rick House out in Clackamas. Uh, they are 200 liter American white oak medium char barrels. We put as much of uh, the equipment as we could outside. We have a uh, neutral grain storage tank. All of our cooling equipment is outside. And then we have a uh, 75,000 pound Wheatland bin. So this is a, uh, a grain silo that holds all of our malted barley. Uh, the malted barley is coming from, uh, from Great Western Malting just across the river in Vancouver, Washington. We get this filled every 10 days. We get 48,000 pounds, truck rolls up and blows it into the silo. It's a pretty neat operation, but it's continuous. We're going, you know, six days a week, 50,000 pounds coming in every 10 days, and then 50,000 pounds coming out uh, in these grain totes. The spent grain goes into these picking bins, and then a farmer comes and picks them up and feeds them to his dairy cattle. Miles Monroe, I'm the head distiller, head blender for Westward Whiskey. I think an important part of the, the distillery's history as well is, is kind of where, where everyone's coming from and, and the idea of, of Westward and where it was born. In talking about single malt, I think especially American single malt, you know, you, you talk about brewing, you talk about beer heritage, and uh, Christian himself uh, has a brewing background. Oh, all of us. I, I do as well. Uh, I actually met our, um, our director of operations through the same brewing school that, that he and I both went to, and then yeah, all of our production distillers are all ex-brewers as well. Um, and so that's brewers. recovering. Hi, my name is Jordan Felix, and I'm the distillery ambassador for Westwood Whiskey. You know, we've been talking a lot about whiskey so far. I figured it was time we start drinking whiskey. Uh, we're gonna pour ourselves some, of course, because you know, as they say, never trust the skinny chef. Don't ever trust the sober distiller as well. Have a little something before lunch. Essentially, this is just a microbrewery. It's common to say that whiskey is made from beer, and, and it's true, whiskey is made from beer, but, but we literally make beer before we distill it into whiskey. So our whole process will remind you very much of a, of a craft brewery. If we weren't distilling what we uh, ferment, if we were bottling or canning or kegging at all, we'd be something like the 10th largest brewery in the state. We're producing uh, 16,000 gallons a week of beer. You hear a lot about uh, distilleries adding like little different uh, funky weird things to their maturation warehouses and uh, basically came down to our accountant who had uh, an extra drum set and we had uh, someone working in production who played the drums so they would come out and play the drums while they stacked the barrels and uh, it's lived out here forever and um, we've, we've been really uh, pleased to be able to invite people out here and play the drums as well as um, taste a lot of great cast strength whiskey. The brewing day starts with uh, 2,100 pounds of malt barley. Again, the Great Western Malting uh, two row pale ale malt, is a slightly higher color, goes into the mash tun with about uh, 800 gallons of water. Uh, at about 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, it's enzymes that are naturally occurring in the barley malt, and those enzymes go to work on the starch, convert the starch to sugar. Sugar is going to dissolve into the um, into the water, and then we run it off. We didn't start this distillery because we just moved here from Scotland, you know, and wanted to start a Scottish Scotch malt whiskey distillery in Portland. You know, we very much embody sort of the provenance of the Northwest. You know, not just that the ingredients are from here, but really the attitude about the beer that we're brewing for the whiskey is, is really comes from our experience in Portland as brewers in Portland. We're making this for the palate of the people in Portland, which tends to be, you know, people after years and years of drinking 
very robust and flavorful beers are very accustomed to these more robust flavors, um, but at the same time they want something that's very smooth and very uh, drinkable, very approachable. And so I think it, it couldn't be made anywhere else, and really you can't make anything else here. It's about halfway done fermenting, maybe a little more. Our typical ferment lasts four days. After four days, we let it rest for a day. So it's in the tank for five days. And over that time, it, uh, the alcohol uh, is generated by the yeast. So the yeast is, is eating all that sugar, uh, producing alcohol and CO2. But more importantly, it's also producing all these different flavor compounds that we're gonna use later that are gonna come through in the finished whiskey. And let's try this. This is a beer in process. This is a two day old. It's at about, uh, about four, four and a half percent alcohol at this point. Um, it's still actively fermenting. It's still gonna have a lot of sweetness to it, but uh, it's starting to show what the yeast is doing. Um, like I said, four, four and a half percent alcohol, uh, but a lot of flavor starting to happen. So it's, uh, it's really, um, it's a delicious, delicious midpoint product. Maybe something we should bottle. It's not a perk. I have to try beer at work. This is part art and part science. I mean, there's a lot of science going on here, a lot of the process that is important to understand and can only be understood through understanding the science, but then there's a big part of this process that is really art. It's, it's ultimately what matters is how does the final product taste. To me, a distiller means uh, maker, someone who is creating something, someone who is behind the, the science and the arts and the craft of doing something. I mean, that's, that's what a distiller means to me. Well, I mean, our, our strength is in our approachability, is in our accessibility. You know, we, we want people to come to the distillery and see what we're up to. Um, you know, we're, we're proud of what we're doing and, and we want people to see everything that we do. Uh, Christian often says, you know, we, we have no secrets. Uh, we have no, you know, uh, s uh, special techniques that we don't share. We, we want people to come see what we're doing. It's, it's all there. So we're on the distilling side of our operation now. Once that beer wash is done fermenting out, uh, we have about an 8 to 9% wash. Uh, again, 100% malted barley, essentially an unhopped beer that we're then sending over to our distillery uh, just across the, the other side of the building where we're uh, double pot distilling it out and making our new mate. So this is our 3,000 gallon pot still here. This is built for us custom down in Louisville, Kentucky. Van Dome Copper and Brass Works to make a lot of American stills. They do great work. This is a stainless steel pot. We have all copper, column, linarm, and condenser on this pot still here. Now copper, of course, actually interacts with the spirit vapor itself. It actually makes a cleaner spirit. And that's especially important with single malt Barley has a lot of proteins and a lot of sulfur. The copper actually interacts with that spirit and cleans up a lot of that sulfur. It actually removes the sulfur itself and cleans up the spirit. So this is our first run. This is where we're taking that 3,000 gallons of wash. We're heating it up to its boiling point and we're, we're getting all that alcohol and those really great esters, those great organic compounds uh, that were formed during fermentation to actually come out of the spirit. You can see right here as it's coming out, cascading uh, through that tube there down into our collection vessel. We like to keep this open because, you know, we make our cuts uh, through sensory analysis. Grainy. We're actually, you know, sitting here tasting the spirit as it's coming off the still, making the cuts ourselves, determining what we want to keep and what we want to set aside to just redistill later. And that is essentially our philosophy here in creating Westward American Single Malt is that if we make a good wash with excellent raw materials and a good yeast strain and we treat it all well, then we're not creating too many off flavors. And in that way, uh, we can distill out most of what we've already created. And all of that comes through to make a better whiskey in the end. So that first run produces about 700 gallons of what we call low wines. And that's actually what's gonna go into this other still here. This is our 700 gallon capacity high wine still. So we're taking that spirit that we distilled yesterday from that beer wash putting it into this still here and running our second distillation. 
This is essentially a smaller version of our bigger still that you just saw. Um, here we're heating up that 700 gallons of 35% low wines, creating what we call high wines or also new make. Uh, moonshine, hooch, it's unaged whiskey. It's yet to go into the barrel. So this, this first example that we're, we're trying here is the white dog whiskey. Just up on the distilling deck, we were talking about that spirit coming off the still during the second run you know, that we proof down to put into our barrels. We actually take some of that, proof it down a bit further to 90, our standard westward bottling proof, and include this in our tasting flight here, just so people can taste uh, unaged westward, taste what it's like before it goes in the barrel. So from the westward white dog, uh, or new make if you will, um, I really get a doughy sort of lemon currant sort of uh, flavor to it, really a lot of honey. Uh, layered textures. There's a little vegetal to it as well, and that's coming from the fermentation itself. Uh, really nice, uh, really, really good uh, new make, something that uh, I think not very, very many people can boast, but this is actually quite tasty on its own before going into the barrel. The industry's changing, uh, you know, it's going away from um, that sort of lifestyle driven aspect of, of it to more of like, people want to know who's behind it, people want to know what's going on behind the scenes, they want to put a, a face to a name to a label, and that's what we do. We're not just competing against the big boys, but we're competing really just for consumer attention. We don't really think so much about who we're competing with as, you know, our main goal is just to get people uh, exposed to and excited about what we're doing. Get them to taste it. Most people, once they taste it, they're, uh, they're pretty, well, uh, pretty well sold. We'll move on to our core expression, Westwood American Single Malt. This is our flagship whiskey. This is what we've been talking about all day when you saw during that whole process of um, that two row barley that we're using to brew, using the ale yeast to ferment, and we're then double pot distilling. This is the product here. Uh, we mingle very few barrels together for this. Jordan and I actually on the, uh, the blending team together. We sit down and determine which barrels actually go into this bottle. It's a mingle of uh, a few barrels that are aged about three to five years old. That beautiful chocolate. Or a little cherry. Yeah, so here you're definitely getting some barrel influence for sure. Again, I mentioned, you know, we, we're using new charred oak barrels. And so those have a lot more character to give than, say, a used barrel, something that, you know, a lot of uh, Scottish distilleries are using. So, you yeah, you get a lot more of uh, chocolate notes for sure, uh, some good vanilla, some nice sort of lush, darker notes are coming from that barrel. Really interesting as it as it, it's a very long palate. Uh, there's a lot going on, particularly in the middle part. Um, you're definitely uh, tasting each of the elements. You know, the really, really wonderful malt, uh, a long crafted brewed uh, ale yeast with uh, and, and ale before going to the still, and then just really those beautiful, the, really the best notes from the barrel um, that we're getting from New American Oak. Again, our focus with you know, westward is to preserve a lot of those raw material aspects, a lot of the grain notes and a lot of the fermentation flavors. We're going to just keep hammering that point home because that's really, that is the ethos of, of what we're doing here. That is, that is westward to its core. We want it to be a robust whiskey. We, we want that long finish. We want it to stick with you for a while. Um, it's also why we bottle it at 90 proof. We want it to be just a little more present. We think that there's a lot going on with it and it's a complex whiskey. And so in that way, we, uh, we enjoy it. Yeah. I'm going to take you through the rest of the distillery now. We're actually walking through our barrel prep area. So we use full-size bourbon barrels. That's charred white American oak barrels, new, coming straight from the cooperage to our distillery here. So we want to prep those barrels and make sure that they are watertight, that they're actually hydrated and going to hold uh, the spirit when we put it into the barrel. So we'll bring the barrels in here, we'll unwrap them, we'll get them hydrated, we'll put a little water in and do a pressure test on the barrels to make sure we don't have any leaks. You know, these barrels right here, these are just staves and hoops. These aren't jointed or glued or anything. These are actually only held together by the pressure of the wood and the hoops themselves. So if you were to take these hoops off, it would just fall apart and be a pile of wood. And so again, we want to keep those hydrated. Now inside the barrel has actually been charred. Now the difference between toasting, which is what you see a lot in winemaking, a toasted barrel, and charring, which you see a lot in whiskey, is the amount of fire and the amount of time that wood's actually been allowed to burn. With toasting, uh, the wood is just sort of exposed to fire for a very short amount of time. With charring, they're actually setting the wood on fire. 
and then it's allowed to burn for a certain amount of time. And so we actually have differing char levels, one through four at the cooperages, one being the least amount of char, four being the most amount. Uh, char one's allowed to burn for about 15 seconds, up to char four, which is about 35 to 40 seconds of the wood actually being on fire. And so what that does is just char the wood a lot more. You're uh, bringing out a lot more of those baking spice and vanilla notes as you burn the wood more and more. Uh, also, you're creating carbon, so it's actually acting as a filter for the spirit as well. So it actually makes a cleaner spirit. And so those choices are up to each individual distiller and uh, the style of whiskey that they want to make and how long they want to age it. Westward is on the younger side. We age for about three to five years for our single malt. So we want a lower char. We don't want too much of that flavor removed. We like a younger Westward because we really focus on more of those fermentation flavors that Chris John was talking about and a lot of those great malt flavors as well. How do we and others like us, smaller distilleries, survive? You know, many of us are you know, very transparent. We're very accessible and very available to people to come visit so they can put a, you know, a, a face to the, to the company. But also uh, from a market standpoint, I think that what you're seeing is a lot of innovation coming out of the small, uh, smaller, newer, distilleries. The, the bigger guys got to where they are a, a long time ago and, and uh, people really expect them to stay the same and to not change and that's sort of the opposite of innovation and so, and so our place really is to come up with interesting new creative processes and flavors and, and concepts. You know, in 10 years I would love to see Westward be a worldwide established name. We've talked about uh, abundance of, of the Northwest area. There's, there's a lot of grain, there's a lot of uh, craftspeople that have tapped into the water, into the brewing techniques, into the, the distilling techniques. There's cheesemongers, there's all different sort of things. And I, I think the, the, the potential is limitless, really, is in terms of looking, out, looking how we can produce an incredible um, single malt, not only for the Pacific Northwest, but for the United States, and also to be on par next to those other major brands like McAllen or Glenlivet or uh, Glenmorangie or Elijah Craig or any of those sort of things, not only just being a single malt, but being an incredible whiskey as well.